Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. I say this every year, but this is the year that I'm going to review all of my favourite reads of the year, with a reasonable timeline of reading them, mostly to make my end of year posts a little more convenient. So here I am with my first favourite of the year, and an immediate entry to my favourite books of all time list. This is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher, and I gave it a 5 star rating. This isn't the kind of fairy tale where the princess marries a prince, it's the one where she kills him. As a shy, confident race third-born daughter, Mara escaped the traditional fate of princesses to be married away for the sake of an uncaring throne, but her sister wasn't so fortunate, and after years of silence, Mara has finally realised that no one has come to their rescue. No one except for Mara herself. Seeking help from a powerful grave rich, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince. If she can complete three impossible tasks, build a dog of bones, sew a cloak of nettles, and capture moonlight in a jar. But as is the way in tales of princes, witches, and daughters, the impossible is only the beginning. On her quest, Mara is joined by the Grave Witch, a reluctant fairy godmother, a strapping former knight, and a chicken possessed by a demon. Together, the five of them intend to be the hand that closes around the prince's throat and frees Mara's family and their kingdom from its tyrannous ruler at last. Nettle and Bow by T. Kingfisher is a good fit for those seeking a story that subverts traditional fairy tale tropes, featuring a shy and unlikely heroine who embarks on a dark, adventurous, and often funny journey to save her sister and challenge an abusive prince. The author takes the bones of fantasy and fairy tale and makes them into something entirely new, with what I have learned as a signature mix of the grim and the delightful. There are so many elements here that make me feel like the book was written for me specifically, including this being a quest fantasy with a found family element, and also being fairy tale esque. It plays with fairy tales in a way where we have the comfort and cosiness of the story with a dark thread running through it. I think that tonal dissonance might be off putting for some readers, but I think the darkness is well woven with the cosiness, and I greatly enjoyed reading it. It's one of my favourite ways to see fairy tales explored. It's also not a retelling in any way that I can tell, just heavy on the fairy tale vibes. The writing is what really made this book. It's not a long book, somewhere in the mid 200 pages. It's definitely short and contained. The imagery and the setting were immaculately described, and the tone in places was almost blunt and very to the point, which was quite refreshing. This is my first T. Kingfisher read, and I'm already deeply in love with her fantasy work and how unique the worlds are. It was also just a nice to read about characters in their 30s and older going on adventures, even if that adventure is a quest for revenge. I think this book is marketed as horror fantasy on Goodreads, and I can see why based off some of the more disturbing elements, but it's not particularly scary or gruesome, just a little creepy in places. The reason for me not rating it a full 5 stars, I rated it 4.5 stars on Storygraph, is that the plot does go what I can only describe as a little astray in the middle. I think we lose the thread and the urgency of the plot, and it ambles in a way which is quite common for quest fantasies. I usually love the stops we take along the way, but you can easily stray too far from the main plot. This is also the rare case where I would say that I would have loved if this had a stronger romantic element, but I'm desperately trying to review books for what they are, rather than what they are not. We are also living through a surge of romanticy and spicy fantasy, so I feel like it's important for those readers to know what is involved before they start reading. The romance elements are more of an implication that the two characters are interested in each other, and it played into how the book ended, and the ending is surprisingly heartwarming and uplifting. This book is ideal for anyone who enjoys fantasy with little to no romance, which I almost always do, but I think this one would have been better with either absolutely no romance, or a stronger romance. I was left wanting a little more of that particular element, but overall that's not what the story is. This is my first T. Kingfisher read, I fell in love with it from the first page and it's my favourite read of the year so far, I would definitely be reading more from this author in the future. In the comments below let me know if you've read this book before, if you have any recommendations or books that are in a similar vein to this one, and if you've read other books by this author and which one I should read next. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!